Okay. I'd like to talk about some real science of anti-aging, if I may. Now, as you can see, uh, I was presented here as uh, the head of the National Center for Cell Therapy and Stem Cell Transplantation at the Hadassah Medical Center in Jerusalem. But in fact, um, next month, starting October, I'm going to move to Tel Aviv to open a new international center for cell therapy and cancer, trying to exploit the potential of cell therapy in uh, various fields in medicine. Now, as you know, the, talk, the topic of my talk is the potential intervention for delaying the aging process and improving quality of life by cell therapy and new low molecular weight compounds that can change the fate of cells and tissues. We heard a lot uh, from Dr. Klatz and other speakers that over the years, the lifespan expectancy increased dramatically in all the world and it is continuously increasing. However, surprisingly, the maximal life expectancy did not change a bit. In other words, we do not live longer than those that live long age, that, uh, and that is a, a big problem. And due to the fact that people now age, uh, I mean, live more years, we have to think not only about uh, the, um, doesn't move. We have to think not only about median life expectancy. I'm sorry, it doesn't move. Sorry? That's what I'm doing. That's, that's, no, this one. Okay. No. Okay. So everybody uh, wants to live forever but nobody wants to get old. So we have to think not only about extension of life, but also how we can improve the quality of life of those that li will live longer. Because just living longer and having poor quality of life is no big deal. And therefore, I would like to discuss with you some new potential anti-aging products, both pharmacological and biological intervention for prevention of the aging process of the skin and other tissues and the feasibility in principle to expand a lifespan. Is it a myth or is it a reality? When we talk about anti-aging methods, I think we have four major goals. One, to facilitate apoptosis or natural cell death of cells that are old, especially when we talk about the skin, there's no need for the old cells that are going to die. We'd like to facilitate their death or the natural cell death, which is called apoptosis. The other thing we would like to do, we would like to ma maintain the hydration of the skin of the cornea stratum in order to maintain the turgor of the epithel epi epidermis and to, to facilitate flow of nutrients from the skin and to the skin. And we would like to prevent the aging process of the cells. And finally, to design replacement therapy that can reconstitute deficient cells do better biological feeling, not with artificial products as we have heard before, but with natural products like Mother Nature does it, and uh, maybe to correct injuries and diseases caused by uh, the, uh, damage or deficient or sick uh, cells or tissues. So we are going to cover all of these uh, topics. The first compounds I would like to discuss is uh, the ceramide and sphingolipids. Here are the chemistry, here's the chemistry of the ceramides, sphingomyelin, which you see it's a ceramide with a coupled to a, another moiety. Uh, there are sub, we don't, I don't want to go into the chemistry, just to tell you that there are some basic principles. Ceramide is a molecule that, has a, that is the most important component of the lipids of the skin. It, uh, it uh, attracts water molecules, and like this, it keeps the turgor, the tension of the skin, and the quality of the skin, and the structure and the function of the skin. And therefore, it also facilitates a, a normal turnover of epithermal cells, and uh, the ceramide metabolism plays a very major role in the aging process of the skin. And um, you can see that it is, uh, should be called, in fact, environmental protector, because it, it uh, prevents also rapid loss of water to the skin, to the epidermis. When it is dry and aged, it looks strict, and, 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 and not nice, but also it prevents dehydration of the entire individual because the skin protects our water balance. So it's a key molecule uh, in the epidermis 
that is in charge of the way we look and also of the quality of the skin. Now, the potential therapeutic intervention is uh, to design some uh, molecules that are analogs that are competing with, uh, with, the, with the enzymes that uh, disintegrate the ceramide. And like this, we can increase the content of ceramide into the cell, and that will result in two effects. Number one, it will promote apoptosis of senescent cells, and number two, it will give the skin a much better look. And we have designed a series of new compounds that can do that. By topical application of the skin, we think by analogs that are uh, ceramide and uh, sphingolipid analogs, we can increase the content of the ceramide into the cell. And by the way, that will also decrease the chance of getting skin cancer because, as I told you, an increase of the level of ceramide into the cell is also anti-cancer because it promotes death of abnormal cells that are potential uh, cancers. Now, in principle, can lifespan of a cell be increased other than taking care of the epidemics by ceramide and sphingolipid analogs? Well, uh, the aging uh, process is uh, controlled by many factors, but uh, there are also, most of it, of course, is genetic, but in nature, there's a big variety in the aging. I mean, some animals will live days or sometimes maybe minutes, while other animals can live more than 200 years. But it's not only the genetics. Even in the same species, there are very major variations of the age of the individual or the species. For example, if you look at the bees, the, the male worker uh, survives a very short time, and the queen that has the exact same genetics will survive 30 times longer than a male worker although they have the same genetics. So it's a very complex uh, uh, process that involves genetics, but also many other factors that control the aging. This, for example, fish uh, is uh, more than 200 years old. And again, uh, we don't understand all the factors, but we do understand that there are many enzymes, more than 50 genes that control the aging process. And some of them, as I'll show you, we may be able to control pharmaceutically. One of the most important uh, factors is the IGF-1, and it's a hormone which is similar to insulin, and it is very important in uh, determining the aging. We know that in C. elegans, the worm, which is considered a model for studying anti-aging, a defect in the IGF-1 gene can cause 450% increase of the lifespan of the animal. So just interfering with one gene which is involved in a complex biochemistry, I'm not going to go into that, can increase the lifespan of an animal for up to five times, which is really dramatic. But there are also other factors, hormones, autophagy, tyrosine kinase inhibitors of C-able, again, complicated issues, I cannot go into details, but for example, in a syndrome known as Werner syndrome, which is premature aging, there's abnormality of the tyrosine uh, uh, phosphorylation of a series of enzymes which probably play a very major role in premature aging and early death of these children with Werner syndrome. So uh, all of these factors play a very major role. We're not going to go into details, but these are some of the genetic pathways that control uh, the lifespan, and you can see that it is very complex. The most important ones being, as I said, the insulin receptor DAF2, DAF2 uh, and, uh, and some other uh, enzymes, and interference with these genes can dramatically increase the survival of cells. So here are some of the inhibitors we generated in our laboratory that inhibit the IGF-1 pathway that mimic the gene deficiency in the worm. And using these factors, and also some hormonal factors that also play a role when we age, throughout the aging process, by interfering with, again, analogs that interfere. Some of them are well known to you because they are used in cancer, breast cancer patients, Femara, and Arimidex. Those factors, all of them, can, in combination and isolated, extend the lifespan of Drosophila flies and C. elegans, the worm, which normally survives exactly 14 days and is used as a model to study life expect extension. So in the previous meeting uh, in the United States, I presented some data Using some of these analogs, we can dramatically increase the survival of C. elegans as compared with the control. So we have now small molecules that can increase the lifespan of the animal.